Hello, I'm Paul Riseborough. I'm one of the maintainers for the PX4 Estimation Library. This presentation will cover the changes that we've made in the past 12 months, I'll do some more detail into the Your Estimator work and how to set it up for operation without a magnetometer. And we will then finish uh, with a very short discussion of the priority areas for development in the next 12 months. The estimation library is a complex piece of code. It's flight critical. It uses inertial navigation uh, theory, estimation theory, and it has a significant number of developers. The estimation library uh, goes back to the uh, some original extended cam, cam and filter work that was performed back in uh, 2014 on the project. And it's been through uh, several iterations since. This slide is a top level view of the architecture. This has been covered in more detail in your last year's presentation. The IMU data is the key piece of data in the uh, estimator. It provides the prediction for the extended Kalman filter and also the prediction for the output predictor. The output predictor uses the latest IMU data and provides a low latency uh, solution for the kinematic states. The kinematic states being the attitude, the velocity and the position. The extended Kalman filter algorithm runs on a delayed time horizon so that it can bring uh, data together with different time delays at different data rates, different times of arrival. The amount of work in the past 12 months has increased significantly. We merged over 120 pull requests since the last conference. And it's been split mostly between one third for functionality and performance, one third for bug fixing and testing, and then one third for improvements to uh, code style, readability, maintainability, what we call uh, housekeeping uh, uh, changes. If we have a look at uh, some of the more significant uh, functional enhancements that have been made, uh, the first was an initiative uh, that commenced, uh, well, back in 2018 with the uh, original Three Degree of Freedom development. And that's to develop a your estimator that is able to use IMU data and GPS velocity data to estimate your angle and with no reliance on an external your sensor or a magnetometer. And this has enabled us to automatically correct for your if we have a loss of navigation uh, post takeoff and to correct before the commander failsafe activates. It also enables a, a limited operation without a magnetometer, but does require that the initial takeoff and horizontal movement be performed in a non-position control mode. There have been other changes to improve robustness. One significant uh, change has been the ability to compensate for accelerometer clipping by increasing the process noise. That's been enabled by changes to the IMU drivers uh, that give us direct access to the high frequency sample data within the uh, IMUs. We've also improved the detection and the ability to reject bad magnetometer data. And uh, I would recommend that you have a look at those uh, pull requests if you're interested in the uh, synthetic uh, z-axis uh, method, which enables platforms with corrupted z-axis magnetometer data uh, to replace that with synthesized data. We also have the ability to reject magnetometer data if the length of the field exceeds the limits that we would expect based on the World Magnetic Model Table. Improvement for external vision-based navigation sources has been significantly improved. 
that started with some uh, better diagnostics uh, logging. We're now able to uh, individually uh, inspect the innovations and the innovation variances for the individual uh, components. So we can distinguish in a log the innovations from the GPS, from the innovations that, that have resulted from the external vision system. There's also been addition of support for velocity data from an external vision system and use of the full covariance matrix that, that uh, accompanies the vision uh, based uh, state estimates. The rangefinder and optical flow usage improvements have focused on improving the transition period from on ground to in air and accommodating rangefinders that produce invalid data. Um, at uh, when they're close to the ground. We've added uh, unit testing using the Google G-Test library. We have over 50 tests implemented to date. Uh, they're being uh, developed and added uh, with each uh, pull request uh, for new features. And also importantly, uh, the ability to run automatic reversion testing using replayed sensor data. This is important because we have a, a significant number of pull requests that are refactoring or non-functional changes. And what the reversion test enables us to check is that these types of uh, requests, pull requests, don't result in unintended changes in the state estimation. And we encourage developers to split their pull requests into functional versus non-functional uh, components because that maximizes the usage of this uh, reversion uh, testing facility. The Euro alignment work was initialized back in 2018 and it was a, uh, an R&D task conducted using simplified three degree freedom models to determine if there was a, some uh, estimator structure that would enable us to, uh, with low computational cost, um, robustly estimate you're using a velocity aiding technique. That is a technique that uses inertial data and uses uh, an external northeast reference frame uh, velocity data. Uh, that work concluded that a combination of a bank of extended Kalman filters feeding into a Gaussian sum filter provided the best uh, performance uh, cost trade-off. Uh, we have here a, a very high level description because the IMU produces three-axis data, you know, three accelerometers, uh, three gyros, and the motion of the vehicle is, you know, six degrees of freedom, we have to use a bank of five AHRS solutions that use complementary filters, and these take the three-axis IMU, gyro, and accelerometer data and convert it into, go from six degrees of freedom to three degrees of freedom of inertial data which is then used by the bank of extended Kalman filters. The Kalman filters, uh, their output is then combined by a Gaussian sum filter. This shows the, uh, the, the processing flow, and you can see that the data paths are independent up to the Gaussian sum filter. Now, which one of these AHRS and extended Kalman filter banks starts with a different your hypothesis? We start initially at the when the vehicle arms before it starts to move, we initialize them 72 degrees apart with the assumption that we have no prior information about the yaw angle. And then as the vehicle moves, the estimates converge. This feature is now available in PIX for Firmware Master. It will be part of the uh, next stable release. And of course, as, as been mentioned before, we get automatic recovery from bad magnetic yaw. We also have the ability to operate without a magnetometer, perform a horizontal position or velocity change uh, to align the yaw and then commence uh, normal navigation. Uh, the work has been funded uh, thanks to uh, Wintra and Orterion, and they enabled this original development work to be taken into uh, a six degree freedom prototype followed by coding for the PX4 ECL library. Flight testing to date has been limited to multi-copters and VTOL. There's been settled testing of fixed wing additionally. 
And the two types of testing are firstly, take off with the uh, with a compass error of uh, up to 180 degrees uh, to initi initiate a, a loss of navigation flyway. And that testing is uh, demonstrated that the navigation is able to be reset, um, position control recovered before the commander failsafe activates. And we've also tested takeoff in altitude control mode with some horizontal position changes and then a switch to a position control mode. And Wintra have performed testing using one of their test uh, their flight to test uh, platforms and have kindly provided a video of one of their tests. And this shows a vertical takeoff with 180 degrees of compass error uh, with a subsequent start of flyway, navigation recovery, and then uh, continuation of normal flight. That's the recovery. And then it transitions into the fixed wing part of flight. Uh, CPU load measurements uh, for this estimator show that we're consuming less than 1% of CPU on, on a STM32F4. Uh, we haven't conducted uh, profiling measurements on the F7. We would expect that to be uh, significantly lower. If we inspect the output from one of the multicopter tests, we can see in the first graph the individual your estimates. And this is a, a vehicle that arms, performs a vertical takeoff with minimal horizontal movement. You can see here with the GPS velocities on the, on the bottom uh, uh, graph. But even with a little bit of uh, horizontal movement, there's still uh, convergence of the weights for the Gaussian sum filter. A reduction in the estimated variance is seen by this black line, which stabilizes at about uh, 0.5 radian squared. And as soon as the copter pitches forward and starts to accelerate, there's a rapid, you know, in less than half a second it takes to converge to a your estimate that enables a reset of the main filter. It should be noted that the horizontal velocity change does need to be greater than the uncertainty in the GPS velocity. For future work, we intend to continue to prioritise those items that will improve tolerance to sensor faults. Um, we, and that will include uh, further work to support a multi-lane um, architecture, which the F7 processor will provide us with sufficient uh, overhead for. And the also, expansion of the ability to handle a combination of sensors to expand the envelope of non-GPS navigation is also important, as is a continuation in um, test coverage improvements. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to answering your questions.